Good morning. Hi. I'm Kerry, a yoga teacher and co-founder of House of Lights Retreat Centre here in the south of Spain. And I'm on my sunny rooftop this beautiful morning. Um, so today I'll be leading less of a, a flow and more of a workshop. Um, I thought it's particularly appropriate to be out here with the, the sky and the mountains as a backdrop as the workshop will be based around taking flight. We're going to be looking at Bakasana, at crow pose. Um, so to have this elevation and have this beautiful view behind me seems even more appropriate today. Um, so I haven't done a live stream for a while. Um, it's great to be back here with you all. I'm just going to give a moment to see who wants to join. And I'm excited and inspired today um, by another yoga teacher. I love this idea of a network and a community of yogis, yogi practitioners, yoga teachers, and that we all share our knowledge. Um, but I'd really like to, to credit her. Her name is Natanya Stambouli, and I recently purchased her online course uh, called Yogi Flight School. So it's all about forearm balances, hand balances, inversions, about that change of perspective, about taking flight. So a lot of the material covered in the workshop today, I'd like to credit to her. A lot of the, the tips and the strategies um, and the, the advice around arm balancing and how you can shift and progress your practice is, is down to Natanya. So thank you to her. You can find her on uh, Facebook and Instagram and also at www.yogiflightschool.com. So please take a look, there's loads of interesting stuff there. Um, so today I will be, it will be a mixture of, um, we're going to do a warm up obviously, so if you are following this as a class then you're not just going to be jumping into moves with a really cold body. We'll be making all the warm ups really relevant as we're focusing on one specific peak pose. Um, so we'll be, they'll all be relevant to crow pose using and activating and warming the parts of the body that we're going to be using in this pose and also starting to program the brain that these movements are possible. So it's really useful to get into lots of the different parts of the pose whilst you feel safe, whilst you're grounded, whilst you're not flipped upside down. And then when you take that into the inversion, you have the body memory that your body can actually physically do that. And you might be a little bit challenged because you're now upside down or you're taking weight on your hands instead of your butt or your feet, um, but your body knows that it's possible. So um, we'll be starting up, just coming into a comfortable cross-legged position. And as one of the uh, aspects of the practice is going to be focusing on the importance of gaze in any inversion and arm balance, um, so I'd just like to say before we start that when I'm telling you to gaze forwards, the idea is not to crunch into the back of the neck. If I just go on the side for a minute, to gaze forwards, you don't need to throw the head back to look forwards. A lot of the action can come from your eyeballs. So you can literally be gently lifting the chin, and but mainly looking forwards with the eyes. So that in mind we will start with warming up the neck so a comfortable cross-legged position let's just find the breath initially connecting with the breath allowing it to ground you allowing it to anchor you into the present moment any balances are connecting with that moment between movement and stillness so really connecting with that pure present moment awareness On the next inhalation, gently lifting the chin without crunching into the back of the neck. Bring the movement into the eyeballs as well, looking as high as you can. And as you exhale, lower chin to chest and look towards your chest. Inhale, raise the chin. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift and look up. And exhale to lower, just pausing here, interlacing the fingers on the back of the head. Allow the arms to hang heavy. 
full deep breaths, expanding the rib cage, side to side, top to bottom, front to back. And then releasing the hands from the head. So we're now gonna move on to the shoulders. Uh, another huge part of this arm balance. Um, they're fairly stable joints, but to have a good understanding of the structure of the joints is quite important to move into Bakasana safely. So I'm just going to talk for a moment about protraction and retraction whilst we're not, well, there's no weight bearing on the shoulders. So if you extend the arms forwards and flex at the wrists, almost imagining that you're placing the palms of the hands down onto the ground. So if you push that imaginary ground away from you and feel the shoulder blades move away from one another, broadening the shoulders, this is protraction. This is the action that we're looking for in crow pose and a lot of the other arm, and arm balances and forearm balances. So if we do the opposite, if you draw the backs of your hands, keeping the arms straight towards your body and feel the shoulder blades gently pinned together, this is retraction. So the, state, the shoulders are much more unstable, unsafe in this pose and we're collapsing. If your hands were on the ground, your chest would be moving towards the ground, you'd be dumping into the shoulders. So just creating the body memory that this is what we are looking for, pressing the palms away from you, creating space between the shoulder blades, draw the hands towards the body, kiss the shoulder blades together. This is what we're not looking for in the pose. So just bearing this in mind, protraction and retraction, if I use this terminology as we move into the pose. If we start from the ground up, which seems a sensible thing to do, so normally I would be cueing from the feet all the way up the le legs in a pose, but when we flip the body upside down, our hands or forearms become our feet. So we're gonna start looking at the hands. If you first just lift your hands, if you just gently open them wide as if you were going to wave at somebody, you notice that the palm is fairly flat. If you really extend the fingers as wide as you possibly can, flaring to your full extension, and then look at the palms of your hands, you might notice that uh, a cup appears, an indentation. So this is actually one of the lesser talked about bandhas within yoga. You might be familiar with the Uddiyana Bandha and Jalandhara Bandha. This is another energetic lock that we create by flaring the fingers really, really wide. So we're activating the hands. If you stand, when you're standing on your feet, you might not even notice you're doing it, but your toes will constantly be shifting and moving and adjusting to keep you balanced. So this is the action that we're now gonna be looking for in the hands. So creating hastabandha, creating this cup shape in the hands is essential. And then coming on to, into tabletop position like this and visualizing that through that cup shape you could literally draw energy up from the earth. The other two points that we want to anchor down into the ground is the root, the base of your knuckles. So where your fingers attach to the palms of your hands, we're going to press this point firmly into the mat. The next knuckle up, these knuckles, the middle knuckles, they can be floating away from the ground. The third point of contact, which is essential, is the fingertips. So bringing the palms back down, create hastabandha by creating that cup shape. Press the root of the knuckles into the mat and then make sure that your fingertips turn white by gripping the mat with your fingertips. So just as your toes do while you're standing, your fingertips become your brakes when you invert and you come onto your hands. So just to demonstrate this, from a simple tabletop position, keeping the arms straight, grip the mat with the fingertips. If you start to keep, move forwards, move the shoulders forwards and in front of the wrists, and to that point where you can press more firmly into the mat and stop yourself from face planting, and then move back. So just experiencing the power that your hands hold. So your hands are your brakes in this pose and you really have to bring trust into the fingertips. This is another aspect of the practice of what uh, Natanya teaches that I love is the, the mental side, the, the whole holistic approach to yoga where what we experience on the mat is then what we can experience in life. 
So she calls that point where you're leaning forwards into a pose and you're sure you're going to face plant the oh shit moment. <laughs> I love that terminology because it's so true on the mat and off. And if we don't experience that slight sense of discomfort and that oh shit point, we never get to get the benefits, get the juice, get the goodness, get the magic that happens beyond that point. So we're going to be, I'll be mentioning the oh shit point, which is a, a Matanya phrase, but it's so important because it's often at that point, as it is in life off the mat, that you have to trust. You really have to trust. You have to dig deep, knowing that on the mat, if you fall, it's okay. You can put a blanket in front of your face. It's absolutely fine. So we've engaged the hands. The next part of the body we really have to take care of. Uh, lots of people that do arm balances and inversions have wrist injuries. So we're gonna take some time to really warm up into the wrists. So first of all, we can just make fists with the hands and start doing slow motion circles with the wrists, really exploring every millimeter of mobility. So moving as wide as you possibly can in each direction. So instead of just a, quite a, a floppy little relaxed uh, wrist circles we're really going to explore how far and what it feels like to extend as far as you can in all directions changing direction and the next one is a perfect example how we're gonna move through some discomfort so we're gonna do the hand bursts so it's not a, a wrist action, it's not a floppy wrist action, it very much just comes from the fingers. So, so that the shoulders are relaxed today, we can just keep the elbows in towards the ribs, the elbows bent. And we're going to start to open and close the hands as vigorously and dynamically as you can. So this is going to bring warmth and action and energy into the finger extensors into the forearms, into the wrists. So you should find at a certain point, this becomes a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit unpleasant. This is where the goodness is. This is where you wanna push on through a little bit further. So it's a perfect one to try this philosophy with because you're in no danger. It's not like you're gonna fall on your face. You can't damage yourself. It is just uncomfortable. So see if you can dig deep and move past that point grit your teeth a little bit, keep breathing, see if you can keep a smile on your face and move through or just be with that discomfort instead of giving in to the thoughts that might be like, when is she gonna let us stop doing this? Just keep breathing, keep moving and then relax the hands, just rest the backs of the hands onto the thighs, return to the breath, connect to the sensation that you've created in the forearms and the wrists noticing that they feel alive and vibrant, full of energy. Slow the breath back down. When we meet challenge in our yoga poses, it's often a temptation to hold the breath. So just returning to soft breath, long, slow inhalations and full, complete exhalations. So one final wrist warm up that we're going to do before we move into the crow pose. Um, this one I'm gonna show you once so that we don't run out of time, but you can repeat this, I'd say ideally up to five times. So extending the arms out to the side and making fists with the hands, then bending at the knuckles like you're doing a strong man impersonation. Then really flex the wrists, point the knuckles as far down towards the biceps as you possibly can. And keeping this flexion in the wrist, start to very slowly extend the elbows out to the sides. Keep drawing the wrists down, wrists down. At a certain point, you'll, miss, you'll meet really strong resistance. And that's the point where you want to pause and hold it and breathe. And then straightening the arms as much as you possibly can, keeping the wrist flexed and then drawing them back in. So this is to be repeated maybe three to five times to strengthen the forearms. So we're now going to move um, into a little bit of core warm up because we've done wrists, we've looked at shoulders. We're just going to activate and engage the core by practicing crow 
supine on our back so there's no chance of, of falling but we're starting to wake up the core to create that connection between the mind and the movements so bringing yourself onto your back reaching the arms up towards the sky and flexing the wrists as if you were planting your hands on the ground so as you exhale we're just going to draw the knees to gently touch the elbows exhale to release down and tap the toes to the mat exhale to squeeze Inhale, release. Exhale to squeeze. Inhale to release. One more time like this. Now we're going to change it slightly. You're going to see if you can curl a little bit more deeply and bring the knees to the backs of the arms rather than the elbows, so a little bit higher. So exhaling to curl. So maybe the thighs are meeting the stomach a little bit more, squeezing into a tighter ball so that your body knows that it is capable of engaging its core and creating this movement without the added complication of having to balance on your hands. One more time. Okay, we're just gonna hold it here, squeezing in and then flex the feet and do a little running crow on the back. So tapping your toes to or as close as you can to the backs of your wrists. So you should really feel some heat coming into the core at this point. Good morning core, waking up the middle of the body and then release down and coming back to a seated position. So starting now to move into our crow pose. One of the biggest game changers that I learned through the Yogi Flight School was about joint stacking and weight shifting. So before you even try to lift your feet off the ground, checking that you have your joints in an alignment that makes the pose possible. Okay, it's kind of a little bit, um, it's a bit physics really, it's a bit sciency, but it makes complete sense. So if we plant our hands to the ground, hasta banda, create that cup in the palm of the hands. One way of entering into crow is to lift your hips as high as you possibly can. Now, when it comes to placing the knees to the backs of the arms, it can be anywhere from the armpits down to the elbows. But just bearing in mind, if, it, if you can only manage to get your knees to your elbows, brilliant, let's start from there. If you have a choice, if you can get the knees any higher, obviously due to gravity, you're gonna slide down from whatever point you start. So if you're starting on the tip of the elbow, you only need to slide a little bit to slip off. So the higher up you can bring your knee on your arm, you've got that slide option before you drop off the edge. So lifting the hips high, and this is where the joint stacking comes in. So if you have your elbows behind your wrists, all of your weight or 90% of your weight is back, is behind you. So it's physically impossible. If you start from here to try to pick up your feet, gravity will just bring you down. So first of all, stack your elbows over your wrists. So we're gonna, keeping the, for the first part, you can look down a little bit. Um, it's very important when you start to experiment with lifting your feet that the gaze is lifted and you're staring ahead. But while we're looking at alignment, you can look down a little bit. So start to shift the weight forwards and check that your elbows are over your wrists. Okay, only at this point will you experience the lightness of your feet. So looking forwards, you can then experiment with taking one foot at a time. Referring back to this idea of fingers as brakes. So if at any point it feels uncomfortable and you think you're gonna face plant, grip with the fingertips, use your brakes. So lifting the hips high, shift the weight forwards, grip the mat with the fingertips. Are my elbows over my wrists? If so, lift the gaze and see if you can bring heels towards the sit bones. So it's really a matter of physics, okay? This might revolutionize your crow pose um, as without having your weight stacked over your joints, it's physically impossible to get into this pose. Um, so another way that you can come into it, if you can't bring your knees to the backs of your arms, 
it limits you in one sense because you can't move into progressive poses from from crow but if you just want to get into crow if you just want to nail crow another option is to bring if i go this way is to bring the knees to the outer edges of the shoulders or the upper arms and squeeze in as tightly as you can so instead of them being balance on the backs of the arms they can come to the outer edges and squeeze in but it's the same principle with stacking the joints look down and check it's good to do it in front of a mirror because you can actually see the elbows coming over the wrists but hopefully you'll suddenly experience this lightness in your hips and your feet as you can draw the heels up towards the buttocks so um, it's just basically something to be playful with. It will hopefully eventually be part of your practice. It's um, a nice way to, it's a good pose to just uh, play with and experiment with outside of a flow. So that when you come to putting it into a flow, you're more on autopilot and you've got all of these ideas and strategies in place. So your body does it automatically. Um, if there's any questions at all, then please feel free to write them in. I'll be checking the Facebook page after the live stream as well, so I can also answer any questions um, I can write back to you. Um, and yeah, just enjoy playing with this pose. Be playful. Be prepared to fall on your face. Put the blanket in front of you. If you fall, it's just a, a really valuable part of the learning curve. Um, so I hope some of this has been useful to you and I hope you are inspired like I have been to take flight and I will see you on another live stream really soon. Thanks very much for joining. Namaste.